summoners, and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Tia, and today's video will be our guide to Dr. Mundo, the Madman of Zahn. The good doctor's much awaited VGU is finally here, and after some tests, we've compiled all of our thoughts so far on how we think you can most take advantage of this beefed up juggernaut and get some sweet LP. We'll be going over his newish abilities, what's changed, what hasn't, and of course, what builds are best. In case you haven't already seen it yet, we'll start things off by going over Mundo's refurbished kit. Mundo's passive is goes where he pleases. With it, he blocks the first immobilizing effect that hits him, instead losing 7% of his current HP and dropping a chemical canister nearby that lasts up to 7 seconds. Stepping on the canister restores 8% max HP and reduces the passive's cooldown by 15 seconds, but enemies can also step on it to destroy it. This new passive is a huge bonus for Mundo's playstyle. While most people think of the word tank when they hear Mundo, he's technically a juggernaut. He has a slow and a movement speed increase, but with no real gap closer, he's very susceptible to peel. It sucks to go through all the trouble of chasing down an ADC, only to be knocked all the way back to square one by a Janna or Lee ult. This new passive helps overcome things like that a lot. In addition to the new passive, Mundo is also retaining his old passive, with the regen turning down just a bit from 2.5% of his max HP per 5 seconds down to 2%. Mundo's Q is Infected Bonesaw. This ability costs 50 HP, and if it hits a champion, Mundo heals back 50 HP. If he hits a non-champion, he instead heals for 25. Mundo hurls his bone saw, dealing a percentage of his target's current health as magic damage, while slowing them for 40% for 2 seconds. The damage dealt has a minimum threshold and a maximum amount of damage it can do to jungle monsters. This is pretty much identical to how the ability worked before the rework. The only differences are that the health cost doesn't scale up with rank, and it doesn't refund full HP cost when you use it to last hit. Mundo's W is Heart Zapper. It costs 5% current HP to use. Mundo charges up a defibrillator, dealing magic damage each second to all nearby enemies for up to 4 seconds. While active, he stores a percentage of the damage he takes as gray health and can recast. Upon recast or the ability reaching its max duration, the defibrillator detonates, dealing magic damage to nearby enemies. If a champion is hit by the explosion, Mundo restores 100% of the gray health. If only non-champions are hit, the heal is reduced to 50%. The previous version of Mundo simply turned on W and ran at you mashing keys with no discrimination. Now timing the first cast of W before taking huge bursts of damage to store a ton of grey health, and then using the second cast when you are as low as possible, give Mundo players a bit of a skill expression. Mundo's E is Blunt Force Trauma. It passively grants Mundo a flat amount of AD and then further AD based on his missing HP. The active costs 10 HP to use and empowers his next auto attack to be increased by a flat amount and a percentage of his bonus HP and is further increased the lower his health is. If the target is killed, Mundo swats them away, dealing the minimum damage from this ability to all enemies they pass through. The bonuses on this ability max out at 70% missing HP. It also deals 140% damage to minions and monsters. Like W, this ability has had the complete mindlessness taken out of it. Most of the old E strength came from the passives. It simply granted a massive chunk of MR and AD invisibly, with no interaction. This new one still gives a nice passive amount of AD, even when not activated, but most of the strength is in the enhanced auto attack. You'll need to actually make sure you're getting the last hit with it to maximize efficiency. In lane, this will give you better pushing power and with good aim, even some poke on your opponent through the minions so you can still get some damage onto the enemy laner when they're hiding from your cleavers. In the jungle, lining up camps for max damage can have a huge impact on your clear speed. Shaving seconds off each camp may seem pretty trivial, but in reality, those seconds really add up and can make the difference in whether you're able to impact lanes before your counterpart on the enemy team. Mundo's new ult is Maximum Dosage. Unlike the previous version, this one doesn't have a health cost. Instead, using it immediately heals 20% missing HP. For the next 10 seconds, grants increased movement speed, attack damage based on a percentage of bonus health, and regenerates a percentage of his max HP. This pretty much has the same effect as before, but with it now restoring HP over costing it, it can be used at the last second for max effect. On top of the healing, the addition of bonus AD means that you can actually be a damage threat for when you get to stick to a target. All in all, this is a much smaller scale of a rework than most VGUs. 
They were able to pretty much keep Mundo intact to the degree that if you took a player that hadn't touched League in eight years, they'd still easily be able to identify him as the same champ. But at the same time, the changes they did implement were very meaningful. For example, now his WE and ult all give increased damage based on his HP. With that, instead of forcing high base damages into his kit to make him relevant, his damage now scales up as his durability does. Overall, this new kit has more skill expression and counterplay than the previous stat check that would mindlessly run you down and either win or lose based on how fed he was. But at the same time, you don't need crazy mechanics or mind games. Mundo still dumb, now he just smart dumb. Something I want to point out is that I find it nice when Riot balances things out by swapping around abilities within the kit. For example, with Mundo, they took the CC reduction from his W, repurposed it into his new passive, and added a Zack Blob-esque mechanic where you have a chance to heal, but an opponent can also move to deny you. This gave them more opportunities to put a different type of tool into his W, in this case, the Grey Health that allows you to potentially heal up a huge amount of HP. I think this is a really cool rework, and even though it's still super close to the original, I think it may be my favorite VGU so far. But that brings me to today's question of the day. Which champ's VGU has been your favorite so far? I think they've all been pretty successful, so I'm excited to see which ones you guys like and why. So let us know down in the comments below. But now let's get back to the guide. Now that we've talked about everything there is to know about his kit, let's get to the how-to part of the guide. As I've already said, this is a really light rework as far as VGUs go. Honestly, there have been bigger kit reworks with non-VGU updates, like the many iterations of Rise we've seen, for example. He's still a lumbering juggernaut that is meant to soak up as much damage as possible, and with his new kit, you simply have more interaction to maximize your tankiness. This is a nice contrast to the previous version of being a wall of HP and damage with zero mechanics that had to rely on being ahead to be useful. As a result, Mundo's actual playstyle, the niche he fills, what he's meant to do in-game is honestly pretty much the exact same, just with the more satisfying, counterplayable kit both when playing as and against him. He's definitely not at the mechanical skill floor ceiling of champs like Riven and Camille, but you at least have to think about timing your W and ult and whether it's worth going for a canister or conceding it to your opponent. As far as the early game goes, Mundo's strengths, weaknesses, and overall power will feel about the same. First, let's talk about laning. While he doesn't suddenly have some crazy gap closer to allow him to force trade super hard, the ability to swap minions you last hit gives you more trading opportunities on opponents that are sitting behind minions to avoid your cleavers. Aside from the extra trading power, this also gives some extra wave clear. That wave clear is especially helpful since Mundo's W is now about four times the cooldown it was before. Speaking of W, since it's such a long cooldown, you want to carefully trade around it. The ability to soak up damage you take as gray health means you need to time it before your opponent puts out the brunt of their damage. But make sure you actually detonate it before your opponent can get out of the radius. Getting the extra healing from hitting them instead of just minions will really make a difference in how your lane plays out. In the jungle, you'll pretty much have the same game plan as old Mundo. Focus on constantly full clearing, using his W's AoE damage, and lining up monsters for your E last hits for an optimal clear. If you're able to do the first clear perfectly, you can actually clear all six camps right around 315 to 320, meaning you can make it to the Scuttle Crab with level 4. That said, most players don't know how to do that perfectly, but you should be aiming to clear by 330 or 335 at the latest. Any slower than that, and you probably need to hit up one of our jungle coaches for some help. Old Mundo wasn't actually tanky at all without having his ult up. That meant he was pretty vulnerable to being blown up in early game skirmishes and usually resulted in a boring playstyle. You'd pretty much just power farm your camps, and anytime you saw the enemy jungler, you'd counter jungle him on the other side of the map. If successful, you'd end up with a golden experience lead and use that lead to stat check anyone that ran into you once you finally did have your ult up. While this playstyle did actually give Mundo a pretty decent win rate in the jungle, low interaction gameplay like that is so really, it's just boring. And it's really frustrating to go against. Now though, with his new W allowing you to soak up pretty big amounts of damage, you can be more proactive on the map, willingly taking skirmishes. This is big in the current meta, where pretty much every meta champ wants to fight as much as they can, and counter juggling isn't really quite as effective as it was before. Aside from when the fights come to you, not much will change. Mundo's ganks are decent against overextended opponents, 
but otherwise he lacks the hard gap closing, CC, and or burst damage that the current OP junglers have. This harder to execute early game can definitely be a reason you lose games, so make sure you're pathing to the lanes that are actually going to be gankable. Once you get out of the early game, Mundo will, in most games, serve the exact same role as before his VGU. You'll just run at the enemy backline carries, doing your best to kill them or at least completely push them out of the team fight. Mundo was already good at this thanks to the sticking power from his ult and cleavers, but now he does it even better. His new passive means that things like Janna and Varus ult are useless, and since most enemies will be running from you, not at you, they won't have time to stop and step on your canister. This means you'll be able to pick it up over and over again as you chase your foes down. I know I said he'd fill the same role as before, but I also said in most games. There are obviously times where your team comp just doesn't support that. Say you have Cog Lulu with a Control Mage mid. In those games, your team gets a lot more of you being a front-to-back style fighter like a standard tank. Old Mundo struggled in slower-paced front-to-back fights because as soon as his ult was out, he was just a big punching bag. But again, we'll refer back to the new W. Honestly, this ability is just the crux of this VGU. With it being an extra way to heal up in fights, it adds a lot of durability, making Mundo a lot stronger as a standard frontliner. By the time you reach late game team fights, the cooldown will be at or under 10 seconds. So if you start out a fight by using W to soak up the brunt of the enemy team's damage, then pop ult and the recast of your W right as you're about to die, you basically have two health bars. Throw in another W when it comes back up and gargoyle stone plate, and the enemy team basically has to kill you three times to actually bring you down. And all of this isn't even taking ally heals and shields into account. With Grievous being much easier to itemize now, you may think that a tank that is solely reliant on healing just wouldn't be that effective in Season 11, but you'd be wrong. Mundo's healing is so absurd that even with Grievous, he's pretty hard to bring down, and if they somehow forget to pick up any heal reduction items, you'll be immortal. Before we go, let's talk about the build. As far as which ability you're going to max first, we find that E is best in both top lane and the jungle. The bonus AD and AoE damage from the swap makes it a no-brainer for the jungle, but I'll give the reasoning for why you should max it in lane as well. I've seen arguments for the other abilities, but they just don't do it for me. Q does give more poke and maybe make sitting back in harder lanes a bit easier, but you should be able to last hit minions all the same, regardless of what rank you have the ability at. W Max does store a lot more gray health and gives better trading when the ability is actually up. But with the cooldown going from 17 seconds at rank 1 to 15 at max rank, it's just not up enough to make it worth it. You're always going to get the bonus AD from the passive, and the active goes from 8 seconds down to 6 at max rank. With stronger all-around trading and harder-hitting poke that can't be dodged simply by hiding behind minions, you'll just always get more value here. You'll really start to feel how strong it is when you have more extended fights where you get off multiple swings, each one hitting harder as you get lower over the course of the fight. After E, you'll max W for the durability it gives you in team fights. When you have a massive HP pool in the mid to late game stages, increasing that gray health from 25% of damage taken all the way up to 45% is a huge increase to your beefiness. Also, as the game goes on, ranking up Q becomes less and less of an opinion. The damage it deals is by no means bad, but it's not as useful as the other two. If leveling it gave it more sticking power, we'd have something to talk about. But the slow and cooldown are the same at all ranks, and that's all you really need from it. Now for the runes. In top lane, you'll run Grasp of the Undying, Demolish, Conditioning, Revitalize, Triumph, and Tenacity. Your stat runes should be Attack Speed, Armor or Magic Resist, and Health. I'll explain some of the rune choices since there are often a lot of differing opinions depending on where you look. Unless the enemy team has an insane amount of CC, unflinching just doesn't do much for you on Mundo. What your passive doesn't block, you'll have Legend Tenacity and Iron Elixir to help with. You can also grab Merc Treads or when dealing with a ton of slows, go for Boots of Swiftness. With healing from his W, ult, and even the refund on hitting a Q on champs, Revitalize is just OP on him. It also increases the heal from Triumph and any incoming heals and shields from your teammates. I just think Triumph Tenacity is OP on pretty much all tanks, period. Frontliners soak up most of the damage, and that generally equates to a lot of missing health. Each Triumph proc is just that many more seconds the enemy team has to try and burn them down. Tenacity just helps you do your job better, making it harder to peel you off in those times your passive isn't available. If the enemy team has little to no CC, that would make Tenacity worth it. Feel free to swap this out to Last Stand. 
In the jungle, you'll run Press the Attack, Triumph, Alacrity, or Tenacity, Last Stand, Conditioning, and Revitalize. The new Mundo has enough sustain to make it through a full clear without fleet footwork, so we just opt for the more offensive Keystone here. It's kind of a tough call between Press the Attack and Conqueror, but with Press the Attack being just a stronger early rune in general, we're going for that since it suits the current meta. I know it's pretty customary to run magical footwear and approach velocity on Mundo to help stick to targets more, but I just don't really see the point. If you're already laning the 40% slow on an opponent, you should easily be able to stick to them and bring them down. And Mundo gets a ton of value out of all six of the other rune choices we've given, so I'm just not budging on this one. Now, finishing things off, we have the items. Your build order and item choices will pretty much be the same regardless of if you're top or jungle. If you're jungling, start out with Ember Knife. The general rule for deciding your mythic is whether you need more damage from Sunfire Aegis or more sticking power from Frostfire Gauntlet. With Mundo's Q and Ult, you should really have all the sticking power you need, so Sunfire should almost always be the option you go with, unless you just can't aim. You'll either go with Plated Steel Caps or Merc Treads depending on your laner or the enemy team comp in pretty much every game, but as I touched on earlier, there may be the occasional need for Boots of Swiftness. Your next item should be Warmogs in most cases, followed by Spirit Visage. If the enemy team has multiple AP damage threats, or just one that's particularly dangerous for you, you can build the Spirit Visage first. Your fifth slot should be for a Thornmail, and the sixth item can be flexible depending on the type of enemy threats you're dealing with. The best item in general is Gargoyle Stoneplate. Not only does it give a nice mix of resistances and ability haste, but the shield works super well with his new kit. You can ult NW right before you die, then use Stone Plates active to buy time as your ult heals you back up. Other options for more specific reasons are Randuin's Omen against crit heavy comps, Force of Nature when dealing with magic damage comps, or Dead Man's Plate when you just want to run even faster. That's the build for getting as tanky as possible. Mundo skills heavily with HP, with his W, E, and ult all having damage that scales with it. That said, there are a couple of tweaks you can make if you want to be an even bigger damage threat. You could slot in Steric's Gage, Titanic Hydra, or even both into the build. If you're just building one, it can take the flex spot at the end of the build, but if you're building both, you have to make a tough choice. Spirit Visage is just way too core to Mundo, so you're either having to drop Warmogs, which has a lot of synergy with him, or Thornmail, which provides a lot of armor and some valuable Grievous wounds. My personal recommendation in that case is to drop Thornmail. Since you're already going for a more damage heavy build, that fat chunk of 800 HP gives a lot in that department. And that about wraps things up for our guide to Dr. Mundo, the Madman of Zahn. I really hope this guide helps you in your journey to go where you please. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to let us know which VGU was your favorite down in the comments below. And one last thing before you go, feel free to check out our Discord. The link for that is in the description box below. We'd love to have you as part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys next time. And I guess, you know, like you can hear my voice, but I'm waving to you all, even if you cannot see me. Wave. Okay, have a good day. <laughs> Bye.